Welcome to Mediterranean Minutes, the channel that helps you learn to eat the Mediterranean way every day. In today's video, we'll be exploring some breakout ways to make everyday ingredients feel brand new, more fun, and a lot healthier. Keeping my promise about keeping it simple, my first video in this series talked about the basic guidelines of the Mediterranean way to eat every day. The second video gave you a peek into what I like to have in the pantry so that I can eat this healthy way every day. And now, let's talk about how you take what you know and how to put it into practice every day with nine simple steps. And here's another promise. Learning to eat the Mediterranean way every day is easy because with so many tasty ingredients, there's really only two rules when putting it into practice. The first is simple. The less you do, the better it is. And who doesn't love less work in the kitchen? The second is to have fun and start playing with these healthiest ingredients. The more you explore, you'll realize that variety really is the spice of life. Finally, I promise if you adopt all or most of these ideas, you'll be living a healthy Mediterranean lifestyle and feeling a lot better for it. So let's talk about nine ways to go from theory to practice. Number one, start to shift the types of fats in your diet. First and foremost, extra virgin olive oil plays a role in almost every Mediterranean meal. I know I've said this many times before, but it really is that important that it's worth repeating. But there are other creative ways to shift to healthy. Try replacing mayo with yogurt. Maybe not all at once. A ratio of two-thirds yogurt and one-third mayo in dressings will be just as satisfying and creamy. I actually really like the tang that yogurt brings to dishes. Or use some mashed avocado. The only difference you'll notice is a lighter, more flavorful dish. And investigate other healthy oils like avocado oil, almond, and other nut oils, or sesame oil. Some add a really distinctive fresh flavor. And if you want to learn even more about my favorite fat, olive oil, I have a four-part series covering all the essentials that you can find on my channel. Number two, every day, play with your personal box of kitchen crayons. Mediterranean plates are filled with riotous color. Deep greens, rich reds, vibrant yellows, intense purples. Colors that make you feel good just to see them on the plate. The more the better. As the saying goes, eat the rainbow. You don't have to have just one favorite color in the kitchen. It's another chance to play around and have fun with healthy combinations. And all those colors represent lots of different nutrients in fruits and veggies, like lycopene from reds, carotenoids from yellows, folate from greens, and anthocyanin from blues, potassium from whites. My hands down simplest way to make this happen is to do a quick prep of a healthy mix of fruits and veggies when I get home from shopping and have them at the ready for making salads every single day. If you want to make these types of mix and match salads your new best friend too, you'll want to keep an eye out for my upcoming video all about a super simple system for prepping a never ending variety of healthy salads. Number three, be creative and think outside the box. As you start eating this way, I think it's so important to keep it interesting. And the best way to do that is to mix it up and find some new go-tos. Vegetables for breakfast, savory instead of sweet, last night's leftovers, they all play a role. I often start my day with the simple, iconic Spanish tostada. It's nothing fancy or time-consuming to prepare. It's just a piece of toast, mounded high with grated tomatoes, drizzled with some olive oil and a smidge of salt. An invisible trick? Throw some zucchini in a blender with your smoothie. I promise you won't even know it's there. It's a stealthy, healthy way to punch up the power of any quick start to the day. For lunch, enjoy a paper-thin Provencal-style omelet jazzed up with whatever vegetables you have on hand. Make a quick side dish from a bag of pre-washed spinach in a saute pan with a little olive oil, minced garlic, and finish it off with a handful of raisins and pine nuts or rip into a bowl of freshly cut pineapple for dessert. When you start filling half the plate with fruits and vegetables, you're thinking like a Mediterranean. Number four, switch it up, swap it out. I can definitely be a creature of habit when I'm onto a new favorite ingredient like quinoa or hummus, but too much of any good thing can get boring when we have so many options. So don't let that get in your way of enjoying this healthy way of eating. Toss up some new types of greens like kale and chard and toss out the iceberg lettuce. 
And it's okay to travel away from the Mediterranean region and stay on course. Try soba noodles or whole grain pasta instead of refined wheat. Give tofu a try. It's a new one for me, and I'm still learning my way around it, but I'm having fun in the process. Keep things interesting by having a good mix of ready-to-go options on hand. I keep serving size batches of cooked quinoa or mashed potatoes in the freezer, and I make a whole grain rice or farro at the start of the week to enjoy it, hot or cold, at a few different meals. Here in Spain, beans and legumes are consumed pretty much every day. Do they toss them with tomatoes for a simple side dish? You bet. How about a nourishing lentil soup with bits of onions and carrots and spinach and a splash of lemon? Sure. Can you quick fry lentils in a saute pan and sprinkle them over a green salad to add crunch and nutrients? Of course. Number five, spice it up. Sometimes potatoes, beans, and legumes can get a bit boring on their own. So make sure to play with herbs and spices to create a whole new world of flavor for your new style of eating and provide a surprising amount of healthy nutrients, vitamins, antioxidants, and anti-inflammatory qualities too. There are so many options to play with. Rosemary, thyme, sage, oregano, cumin, paprika, sea salt, bay leaf, sumac, turmeric, cinnamon, different kinds of sweet or spicy chili powders. Sometimes, I just open the drawer and I start adding a sprinkle of this or that. I love a bowl of simple brown rice or a pile of crispy smashed potatoes, but what would happen if I added some sesame seeds, a bit of grated ginger or garlic or lemon peel, a smidge of chili pepper or sumac? Would I happen on a new favorite that's addictive? Well, maybe. You'll never know without trying. Number six, it's only natural that the Mediterranean diet includes fish. After all, it's the sea that the name of the diet comes from. If you eat it two or three times a week, you're doing great. While finding fresh fish at the Mercado has become a daily adventure for me, you might find yourself limited to sourcing really wonderful canned options in the dead of winter. That's fine. Just look for affordable options and grab the best you can. A can of tuna or salmon packed in olive oil or a tin of briny anchovies waiting to sneak into a classic Caesar salad all great options. Number seven, snack on real whole foods like healthy nuts and fruit. Can't make it to lunchtime without a little something? It happens a lot to me, especially since I try to adapt to the Spanish tradition of a dinner meal at two and a light meal at nine. But most nuts are awesome snacks. Walnuts are packed with iron and magnesium. Almonds add that all-important vitamin E to your diet. Pistachios, hazelnuts, pine nuts, they're all healthy options when you're looking for that little something. And of course, it's always a good idea to have a piece of fruit or two at the ready. Number eight, keep it simple for dessert. Fresh fruit. On most Mediterranean tables and in most Mediterranean kitchens, fruit reigns supreme. Fresh fruit is the norm as a dessert course on every restaurant menu of the day. More common than most any other type of sweet finish. It's often plated simply and enjoyed at its freshest. When seasonal fruit is at its peak, just think back to that rule we started with and don't mess with it. So many fruits are available in the Mediterranean region that if you can dream it, you can probably find it. And dried fruits are equally popular, like dates stuffed with creamy cheese for the finish of a fancy meal, or a chewy soft dried fig and a smattering of nuts. I'll admit that my idea of dessert somehow always included the word chocolate in it. Maybe it was growing up in a family where brownies were considered a primary food group. It was a big leap for me to think about a platter of pineapple as an acceptable finish to Christmas Eve dinner. Come on, really? But much to my surprise, and while it took a while for this new craving to settle in, I'm there. Do I still seek some super dark chocolate every once in a while? Of course, but now, whether I'm at a restaurant or I'm at home, I'm much more likely to cut up some fruit for dessert and make a pretty plate to enjoy. And I don't miss that slice of chocolate cake one bit. Well, <laughs> maybe a little. Number nine, and the final rule of thumb. If there's one thing about the Mediterranean diet that differentiates it from the fast pace of modern life, it's that eating is an event. It's not just a refill. People don't gobble down a breakfast sandwich while driving to work in the morning. People don't eat while walking down the street. People don't use drive-throughs to grab dinner on the way home from work. Hmm. 
Come to think of it, I don't think I've ever seen a drive through in Spain. Most of all, people don't engage in mindless eating. They really pay attention to what's on the plate. They enjoy each other's company and they don't rush the meal. So try these tricks and see if it doesn't make a big difference in your diet too.